I'll go on YouTube. Now, ever since Eddie Focal released its first quarter results, the market has highly anticipated the release of JFP's results. And guess what? JFP finally dropped its first quarter results today. So we're going to just take this video to review JFP's operation. This is how JFP Limited stock price has been trading since listing on the Jamaica Stock Exchange since March. All right, so the company came out at about $1. So that is the IPO price. All right, and in less than three days or about three days time, the company traded up to about $1 and 95 cents that was some 95 percent increase on one's money but then because the financial sector never approved of this company or this ipo most people that invested in the stock at ipo wanted to flip the stock all right so at the peak of one dollar and 95 cents people started dealing out of the company and that's when you see the company take a nosedive to bottom out at one dollar and 11 cents all right but at that bottom that's when people who had confidence in the company never be allowed and then started investing more in the company all right so people who had confidence in the company started putting more money in the company all right and then the company traded firm for some time now at this juncture this is when the market was anticipating the results of the company all right and as I said, people who are in the company at this point had confidence in the performance of the company and was expecting the company to perform well. So you see the stock price started trading up as the market anticipated the results. All right, so all of that culminated in the company closing at some $1.70 today. All right, so the company is back up at 70% on the IPO. All right, so today, the company went up just 4%. All right, so that's not much. All right, and a volume of some $6.6 million traded as today. That's just the people who are in the company. So what we will do is to look at the performance of the because we are more, more interested in how the company performs than how the stock performs. The local finance, we believe that as the company performs well, it is a must that the stock will catch up. All right, now, how early will it take the, the stock price to catch up? We can't say, but we believe that at some point, the stock price will catch up so it is best for management to pay attention to the performance of the company and leave the market to deal with the stock price and jfp seems to be doing just that so let us now go to the review of the company's performance q1 performance we are currently looking at jfp's first quarter results all right, and it seems like the company has knocked it out of the park, as they would say. All right, so we'll see where the company is promising regular dividend payment and capital gains. All right, and if you are a follower of Blue Color Finance, you would also know that Blue Color Finance does not believe or is not an advocate of junior 
companies or companies listed on the junior stock market paying dividends all right because we believe that these small companies they have so much growth potential all right so it would be best for them to retain those earnings and plow it back into the business and grow the business and give to investors capital gain instead of dividends because each time you pay a dividend then 15 percent of that money goes to the government's coffer right whereas a capital gain the money goes straight to investors all of the money 100 percent of the money all right and we do not believe that these companies should be paying dividends however in the case of jfp it's kind of different because jfp is a matured company and this is very important all right so jfp has been around for over 35 37 years so the company has matured all right so the company took the advantage of listing on the jamaica stock um, i mean the junior stock exchange or the junior harm of the jamaica stock exchange where it will get the benefit of tax credit all right the benefit of not paying any tax for the first five years and half of the tax amount for the second five years all right so this company is a mature company that is getting tax benefit and as a result we believe that it is okay for this company to pay dividends to investors and that is one of the promise that these management are making to shareholders now if you can remember in the prospectus it 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 gave information that the company paid dividends to the owners of the business at the time and this was an issue because people were saying that these people were just taking the money and bailing out of the company all right they're saying that the management or the owners were actually gutting the company because the company um wasn't showing any future prospect all right so the company paid out management paid out some 122 million dollars in dividends as of december 2021 all right and that was an issue but to blue color finance that wasn't an issue because we were saying if the company if management or the owners have invested in the company for so long then it is necessary and the company has grown and matured so it's necessary for them to be taking some form of payments all right and the fact that they were selling or giving us the investors an opportunity to invest in this mature company we did not see that an, as an issue actually we saw it as a strength of the company the fact that the company is paid dividends and will continue to pay dividends because this company as i said is a mature company and it has the ability to pay a dividend. However, even though this company is mature, we are seeing where this company is growing as if it, it's a young company just entering an industry. So let us get into the review of JFP Q1 result. PIOJ is suggesting that given the resilience of the construction sector and what they are seeing and the PIOJ is a credible institution what in, in Jamaica that gathers economic data it's a planning institution of Jamaica so they are saying the construction sector is booming and it did show some form of resilience in the COVID period all right so they are they are suspecting that for 2022 GDP uh, would grow some six to ten percent versus 2021. All right, and this is on the back of the building out of capacity within various industries. All right, so they're saying various industries within the economy is building out their capacity, that is expanding their business including the manufacturing sector and as a result they are seeing where gdp will come out some six percent to ten percent all right so if you understand jfp business capacity building out will filter right down to 
opportunity for JFP because JFP is really the finishing touch of any capacity that needs to be built out. All right. So the increase that we're seeing in the manufacturing sector, I mean, the construction sector means opportunity for JFP to continue to build fixtures and furnitures for companies that are building out capacity. All right. So it's a bit, it's a good look for JFP going forward. Now, when we go down to the financials, we see where revenue increase on 70%. All right. And this is what I'm saying. This company, even though this is coming on the back of a reduction in revenue from the COVID period. All right. So this is some rebounding of the company's revenue. All right. Now, management said many of our customers were also getting back on stream to start or continue with their capital project. All right. So within the COVID period, a lot of capital project went and pause. All right. And as a result, the JFP saw a reduction in its business. And then the old financial sector saw this as a risk but not remembering that this COVID period is a one-off period. All right, so a should analyst would actually eliminate that COVID period and look up at the company from a more stable or from its more stable years of operation. All right, now we see where the company is rebounding its revenue has increased some 70%. And I guess the company is expecting this to continue as most of its customers are getting back on track and they are start building out some capacity or capital project. All right, so the company seed where most of its customers are developing their capital project and this spills more work and opportunity for JFP. Now, when you look at the cost of goods sold, and this is kind of unique because so far, JFP is the only company that we see where cost of goods sold is reducing or has reduced for the quarter. All right, so remember, inflation is rampant. Most company is suffering from inflation. All right, and as a result, their cost of goods sold at many times increased faster than their revenue. And as a result, that put a squeeze on the gross profit margin. But here we are seeing where JFP cost of goods sold has actually dipped some 8%. And as a result of that, the gross profit exploded 168%. And when you look at the gross profit margin, that has improved some 25%, moving from 45% to 70%. All right, so there is a lot of efficiency that is in JFP's operation. And we, we will look at how those efficiency is filtering down to the company's bottom line. All right. So we need to contact management to see what has caused its um, what, what has caused its cost of goods sold to, to dip for the period. All right, to get a better understanding of the company's operation. Administrative costs, however, increased some 46%. All right, and management is attributing this increase to the fact that it went public recently and a lot of the expenses associated with going public was included in administrative costs. However, when we look at selling and, admin and promotion, all right, because that's also a part of admin costs, that has increased some 189%. And this is alarming. But let us put this into perspective. Selling and promotion costs. People, you spend on selling and promotion so as to pull in revenue. All right? So you cannot just look at selling and promotion in absolute term. What you need to do is just compare that with revenue to see if it makes sense to spend the money on selling and promotion. All right, so if we backtrack to, to revenue, we said revenue increased by 70%, all right? But in, in absolute term, that is some $46 million that we're talking about, all right? So the company pulled in $46 million extra 
over 2021 first quarter. But when you look at selling and promotion, the amount of money that was spent or the added amount of money that was spent on selling and promotion was $2.4 million. So in a sense, we're saying that the company spent $2.4 million in order to pull in $46 million. All right, so even though selling and promotion went up by 189%, we're seeing where selling and promotion is just 5% of the additional revenue that was pulled in. So again, this is efficiency. It seems like the, the selling and promotion team is doing a good job. All right, so they are giving you a bang for each dollar that is spent. All right, so a bang for your buck. As a result of these efficiency gain throughout the, 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 the period, operating profit, which is a very important measure of the business that, that JFP carries on, that increased some 237%. All right, and you'll see where there is an economy of scale to be had. Revenue increased by 70%, and as a result, operated profit went up 237%. And that's not all. If you look at net profit, that increased even at a faster pace than operating profit. So that went up some 302%. All right, and this is the fact that the company will not pay any, any tax. Remember, the company will get the tax break. So that is what is attribute, um, contributing to. That's what is contributing to this explosion of the company's net profit. But that's not all. The company throughout the period has strengthened its balance sheet. And we will look at that as, as we, we examine the balance sheet. But what you must notice is that the Finance costs has reduced. So finance costs has reduced to about 50% or reduced by 50%. All right, so we realize that the company paid off a lot of its long-term loans. The company has no long-term loan on its balance sheet currently. And the finance costs that we are looking at seems to be associated with the lease activities of the company. For the company lease some building in, in this quarter to expand its operation, all right? And it seems like that's what is accounting for the finance costs that we're seeing. Now, as it relates to the debt on the balance sheet, the company has reduced its debt to almost zero, all right? So it's a good look for the company in terms of having the strength on the balance sheet going forward. All right, as it expands. So the company have, this will give the company more access to capital, to needed capital, if it so desires. All right, so the company eliminated all of its debt and as a result, couple, coupling that with no taxes, the company's net profit increased some 302%. All right, so again, this is a mature company that we're talking about, but we are seeing growth that is far better than a lot of growth company. And I think that is unique. This creates an opportunity for value investors, people who want to buy company, not because the stock price is shooting or because people are expecting some future growth, but because the company has solid results and solid financial statements, all right, solid balance sheet, all right, and this company prove just that. All right, so JFP out here silencing a lot of the critics, people who did, did not believe, some people did not believe the company would even got listed let us move on to the company's balance sheet. All right, so again, we spoke about the company leasing some factory building, thereby increasing its finance costs. I will see where 
property plant and equipment increased from 46% for the period. All right, so this is showing us that the company is really expanding instead of contracting. And the company has contracted throughout the, the, the COVID period. So after the contraction, what is expected? Expansion. Now, there was an issue that we have to talk about. Remember, in our previous videos about JFP, you can just go back and watch those videos, and I will link them in the description so you can see how our thoughts on JP previously. All right, even has the old financial sector was saying that this company was high risk company. Blue collar finance thought differently. All right, so one of the issue that the company had at IPO or that the financial sector had bones with the company was that the company never had enough cash. Never had enough cash on its balance sheet. And that was one of the issue people had with the company. No. Blue Collar Finance spoke about the company having some investment in the Jamaica stock market. At the time, the company had some $30 million of investment up to September 2021. All right, the company had $38 million of investment in the local stock market. Now, I was schooled on this by some people on Twitter telling me that the company sold off those investment prior to the IPO date. Now, for some reason, Blue Color Finance never saw that in the prospectus, but somebody Twitter me to show me this one line that the company said that the investment was actually sold off and they never had the investment at IPO date. Now, my interpretation of that is if cash was an issue, and I am saying that the company had the investment to rely on, but the company has actually sold off those investments, what it means then is that the company did not have a cash issue because no, the company would have had over $38 million in cash at IPO date. All right, so the company never said what it did with those investments. So that was left to investors to assume whether or not they think the company would squander those investments or put those investments to good use. So here the company specifically talked about those investments. So let us look at what the company said. During the period, the investment account with GK Capital Management was closed and the funds along with that of the IPO were used in restructuring the company. All right, so that money was put to good use. And I, I don't know why people had a problem with the company not having sufficient cash. I think the company had 400 and something um, thousand dollars in cash at the time. But the company was raising money on the market through the IPO. Now, if the company was successful, all that cash stock, all that cash stock wouldn't make even make sense. But here we are saying that the company never had a cash problem because the company actually sold off those investments and was holding cash. But due to the fact that the IPO came after the reported date, I mean the financial date, when the financial was disclosed, then it was not showed on the financials. All right. So that was some risk factor that was overblown and a more shrewd investor would have seen it as not are uh, seen it as not risky as most people have now inventory increased some 15 percent all right so the company is talking up an inventory and the company claims that this inventory is mostly working progress so the company is back at work all right 
So the company has a lot of jobs that it is actually doing at this time. And as a result, we're seeing where inventory is increasing. All right. So inventory increase similarly to the receivables. So we are cool with the receivables increasing some 15%. And I guess this is some work that, that management has already closed on. All right, so this was due to the success of the company in finalizing the ROK hotel project, which they did mention in the prospectus, all right, which they claim was on pause due to the COVID period. So management finally completed that work. All right, so that was undertaken on, um, that, that was a project that they did on the waterfront, Kingston waterfront, all right, which they completed in March. But management did make mention of these projects and that th those were projects in the bag already. All right, so I just cannot understand why this company was not why why this company was frowned upon even though management did make mention of so much projects and 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 what was in front of it all right now cash and cash equivalent that also increased and remember now Sanchez airport project was also one of those projects that went and paused due to the COVID or the COVID pandemic. Now it seems like management is moving ahead with that project because here they're saying they, they have gotten some material deposit from MBJ Jamaica Limited, which is currently one of the company's major projects in progress as at 31st, um, 31st March, 2022. All right, so it seems like management is moving full speed ahead with the Sansa's airport project as was stated in the prospectus that 2022 was the year when that project would come on stream. All right, and they have actually gotten some deposit from, from that project. So that would have meant that they have covered a portion of that work and has been paid for that work. All right, so total liability increased 32%. And the significant part of that liability comes from the lease liability or the factory that management leased recently. All right. Payables also increase due to supply of raw material. And again, we have to make mention that management, there is no loan on the company's balance sheet. So management has paid up all that loan. So this company has one of the strongest balance sheet for any company listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. All right. So this is JFP's result. And this result has silenced the critics. And you will not hear most people talk about this result because most people does not have the credibility or the honesty to come out and say look we were wrong on this and on this right so they will ignore it instead of just reviewing it and tell you where where they went wrong and review their 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 outlook on the company because finance is a humbling game as blue color finance always say so when you make the projections you can be wrong but the thing is when you're wrong you need to be able to admit when you're wrong so you can adjust your outlook and maybe get it right the next time <laughs>